Hi, I'm John. I want to show you how to equip the reaction ring. Uh, I'm really not the uh, repair guy. I'm the technical guy, but I'm more coordinated than the repair guy. So we're gonna. I'm showing you several different shanks here. We've got an HSK 65 straight shank, Cat 40. And this is a Cat 50, and this operation will be performed exactly the same way on any of those shanks. That would also be performed the same way regardless of what head you have on here. What we need is a felt pin, a set of Allen wrenches, and we've prepared these tools so that I don't have to take this out there and put it in the vise and break this loose. But we're going to take these four cap screws out of the clamp collar so we can remove the head assembly. This reaction ring is the thing that takes the most beating when the tool is running. We normally say at a thousand PSI that the reaction ring is going to last about 300 hours. You should check it at 250 or 300 hours. And if it's got pits, there's the head assembly right off of there. Then, um, then it needs to be flipped. You can flip it, you can get another 300 hours, and then we want to replace it and rebuild the motor. The next size element, so there's going to be four little set screws right here to clamp the motor in. We're going to loosen them now so we don't forget to loosen them later. And if you don't loosen them, when you bolt this plate back on here, you can bend it. So we want to take those, just back them off a little bit, back to our 532nd Allen wrench. And we're going to take these screws out. You'll notice these screws are slightly longer than the screws that came out of the clamp collar. So you don't want to get them confused. And you notice we have a nice clean place to work here. I've got to borrow a nice shop towel. We don't want to get a bunch of dirt in here if we can avoid it. Now we're going to take this plate off the end. The plate's perfectly machined. And you'll see that there's a motor. That's the motor inside there. That should rotate freely. We're going to have a clamp ring and a thrust washer. And what we're going to do, the easiest way to get this out normally, is you're going to put a finger in here and hold the motor so it doesn't go anywhere. Turn it upside down and the reaction ring will slide out just like that. We get a hold of him, turn him right back up, and take him out. Now, I took him out in this direction, that was the top. So, I want to take a little felt pen and I'm just going to mark a little black spot on there so that I know if I get in here playing with things, I'll know which side was up and I'll know to flip it. Now, the motor would actually lift out of here. We don't need to do that to flip the reaction ring. But while we're here, we can pull him up out of here. You want to make sure the balls don't fall out like that. Like that. The balls are fit to each hole. You can take a small Allen wrench if you've been having any problems and go around here and just poke the balls in and out of the holes. Make sure that they're nice and free. See that or not? Let's go around. There's 14 of them. Make sure nothing's stuck. This one seems to be in good shape, and it should be, because we made sure before we put in this to it. Okay. And we'll put him back right there on the pencil. You can well, give you a peek in there, and you can see the pencil. Um, there we go. We'll slide him back on there. And take our reaction ring. Inside the ring, you'll see two ball tracks. This one's actually in pretty good shape. In the real world, we wouldn't flip it, but because we're demonstrating flipping the reaction ring, I think we'll do it. So now we're going to put the felt pin mark down, drop him back in the tool. That reaction ring is made so that it's not symmetrical. That way the ball will ride in a whole new, brand new place. So that's like a brand new part. We're going to put our thrust washer, our clamp ring. Clamp ring, again, perfectly machined, so we've got to get him lined up right. Go in there, there you go. We're going to put our plate back on the end. And assemble our four screws. Correct down wrench. And you would tighten these, we're just going to snug them up for now, in the interest of time.
after those are tight, we would come back and snug up the four set screws. They should be about that tight. We're going to do all four of them. And then our head assembly is ready to go back on. So we'll set him. He should, if you look down in there and see the ears on the motor, line those up with the hole in the middle. What was that? So that will fit down on there nice and flat, it will be able to rotate and be adjusted and we'll find the, find the holes where that goes. There they are. Put these four screws back in and we have successfully flipped our reaction ring. Any questions? Tighten these up. Ready to go back out the machine and have this realigned. That's how you flip a reaction ring.